Hello, it's time again for Mid-Month Book Bash and my monthly vlog. So this is our monthly reading weekend where we try to cram in as much reading as we can over the course of four days, starting on a Friday and ending on a Monday. This idea was originally uh, conceived by Doris over at Aldi Books, and I really enjoy this sort of concerted effort to get my reading going because typically I... I have slow starts to the month um, and I have had a slow start to the month of March as well in terms of my reading progress. I did actually finish two books yesterday. <laughs> so the first two books of the month I finished yesterday um, and I, I may bring those up in a, you know later on in the vlog. But for now, I just wanted to introduce the vlog and also to talk about what I'm going to be focusing on this weekend as I read through the weekend. I don't have I have some social engagements planned, but I don't have a lot on my plate, so I should be able to get quite a bit of reading done, and I have some things on the go. But first, before um, we talk about what I have on the go, I want to mention that Doris has uh, very kindly created a bingo card for us to play with during mid-month book bash. Um, and I just have this little tiny sticker. I just printed this off on my new sprocket, my HP sprocket um, handheld uh, little personal printer that spits out these little tiny stickers. That So I'm going to stick this in my bullet journal. So this is going to be the bingo card that I use for the weekend. Um, and I will show you a more close-up version of it here so you can see it. Um, so this has little prompts in each of the circles, and we can try to get a bingo by reading across different themes or uh, reading books that are about these words or make us think of these words. And also March is Doris's birthday month. So happy birthday, Doris. I'm happy to celebrate your birthday during our mid-month reading event. So what am I working on this weekend? I, of course, am deep into my BookTube prize reading. I have finished three of the six books I've been assigned for this round. I'm reading nonfiction. Um, and I am halfway through The Underworld, Journeys to the Depths of the Ocean by Susan Casey. And my goal is to finish this one this weekend. And that would leave me just two more books to read um, for the month of March. So that's my main goal for the weekend. And I am still waiting for my library. I'm hoping that my library will get me copies of the last two books that I need to read. Um, but if not, I'll have to audiobook them, I imagine. So that is uh, the dog that you see there in the background is my daughter's dog that we are babysitting for the weekend. So yeah, I get a little dog action going on. Um, I am also for my presidential reading challenge. I'm reading uh, The Teapot Dome Scandal, How Big Oil Bought the Harding White House and Tried to Steal the Country by Leighton McCartney. So this is a, a book about... Um, Warren G. Harding and his role or his involvement in the Teapot Dome scandal. So this book, I've read like um, the 92 pages. I'm on page 93, chapter 17. And this is quite, um, this is quite uh, like, it's looking, it's looking to be scandalous. <laughs> the book is looking to be scandalous. And so all of the references that the author refers to for the development of this book. They're all like newspaper articles and things like that. And very few, um, there are some books, but mostly newspaper articles. And I think a lot of those newspaper articles were writing in a very sensational way. And so this is a little more um, sort of uh, National Enquirer type writing than I would prefer to read for my presidential biography reading. But I just had that one short biography of Warren Harding that I was able to get my hands on and then this book. So I just need a little bit more information about Warren Harding. So we'll see. We'll see how this one goes. And then the other two books um, to talk about are two audio books that are both buddy reads. Um, the first one is Heartstone by C.J. Sampson. San Sum, which I am buddy reading with Doris, uh, and this is for March Mystery Madness, um, and this is a historical mystery in the Matthew Shardlake series, which takes place in the 1500s during the reign of King Henry VIII. Um, and this particular installment, this mystery, has to do with the case involving a a case involving a ward of the state and the wardship who the wardship was awarded to and maybe there was something hinky that went on with that wardship and so it's deal Matthew has to deal with the wards court which is not his typical area of expertise in the law so that's pretty interesting 
Um, I think I'm like a quarter of the way through that one with Doris. And then the other one, the other audiobook is The Furies, Women, Vengeance, and Justice by Elizabeth Flock. This one I'm reading for Women's History Month, um, and I'm buddy reading it with Patrice and Rachel, and uh, I can't remember how far along I am, and it only have read like the first three chapters, I think, working on the fourth chapter. And this is a series of uh, basically three case studies that the author is taking us through of different women who were hurt in some way and are taking, you know, how they um, try to get justice for themselves or um, in some cases, I guess, vengeance. Although the, the one that the, we're currently uh, reading about is about an American woman who um, was, uh, there's a lot in here that was very triggering. So I'm not going to go into the details, but the first one is an American woman and she's trying to get justice for um, wrongs that were done to her. And it's a very enraging book. And if you read the book, um, Know My Name by Chanel Miller, um, you know what the topic of the Furies is. And uh, it is just really, really difficult topic, but also like really important to understand how the system works in these cases, or it doesn't work, as the case may be. So those are the four books I wanted to sort of call attention to as what I'm going to be working on the most this weekend. There will be a couple other books in the mix. I have two other buddy reads, um, one that's on the go and one that will start tomorrow. So I'll talk about those books in another clip. Okay, we gotta make a quick trip to the library. I've got some books to return. I just wanna mention them briefly. So the first one is this one, um, sorry for the glare. This is A Free Spirited Woman. The London Diaries of Gladys Langford, 1936 to 1940. This is edited by Patricia and Robert Mal Malcolmson. And this was a buddy read uh, with Sean the Book Maniac. It is nonfiction and um, I don't wanna talk about it because I haven't done my final check-in with Sean. So I'm not gonna say what my final thoughts are about it, but I did wanna mention it because I have to return it to the library. This was a book that my library was able to get for me through interlibrary loan from like North or South Carolina, I think South Carolina, and for nothing. My interlibrary loan system is free um, due to the generous donations of uh, somebody who left an endowment to pay for it. So I can request books and if they can find them anywhere in the system, including in other states, um, I can get them, which is amazing. This is a book that was produced by like a British Historical Society and it would, a used copy was going to cost me like $80, which is out of my budget. So I was so thankful to get it. And it is a collection of this woman's diary entries from um, the time right before World War II and then right at the beginning of World War II. Super fascinating. So that has to go back to South Carolina. Um, and then I had picked up one day that I was in there, I'd picked up this piece of fiction, uh, North Woods by Daniel Mason. This has been everywhere all over booktube recently. Um, and I am sad to say that I DNF this book at page 245. It's like a 370 page book. Um, it is uh, basically the story of a piece of property in Western Massachusetts from the time like before as like the beginning of European colonization up through the present day. And each chapter is told from a different person connected with this property um, and I felt that the story really did not hold together. I felt that the author was more interesting, interested in being clever with the style of book that he was writing, the format, the um, experimental nature of his prose than he was in telling a good story. Um, I had heard this book compared to The Overstory, which I loved, and Bark Skins, which I also enjoyed. Um, and it did not, it did not satisfy me the way that those books satisfied me. So I just said, you know what, at page 245, it's not worth it anymore. Um, this is going back to the library. And then another book for the booktube prize that I finished. This is Cosmic Scholar, the filmmaker, folklorist, and mystic who transformed American art, the life and times of Harry Smith by John Swed. Um, and so that's finished and that's going back. So let's go to the library.
Sunday. Let's have a check-in about how my reading's been going. Um, it has been going quite well. Actually, I've had these various uh, social engagements, as you have seen, a um, couple of dinners with friends and family, and that's been lovely. But I have really been doing quite a lot of reading, and I've made great progress. So let's talk about it. Um, I finished uh, my fourth book for the Book Two Prize. This is The Underworld, Journeys to the Depths of the Ocean by Susan Casey. So that is done. So I only have two more to go for Book Two Prize. So that was great. I have also been reading in the Teapot Dome Scandal, How Big Oil Brought the Harding White House and Bought the Harding White House and Tried to Steal the Country by Leighton McCartney. Um, and I have read probably another 75 pages of this one. Um, yeah, not great writing, but I am interested in the information, so I'm going to keep going with this one. I had the book that I got from the library on Friday that I was there to pick up was this one, A Council of Dolls by Mona Susan Power. And this is a book that I'm currently buddy reading with Sean the Book Maniac. We had put this one on hold so that we could read um, the other book that I talked about on Friday that I have can't remember about uh, Gladys Langford, Langsford, um, her diaries, uh, The Free Spirited Woman. So, but we are back to this one now, and I just read part two. This is a fiction about um, a family, a family of indigenous folk. Uh, this is, takes place, it's like a generational type novel, so it's split into four parts. The first part is about Sissy, and it takes place in the 60s, and um, they are, uh, are they Dakota? Yeah, they're Dakota people. And then the second one is uh, about Ina, and um, she is in like the 1930s, I believe. Let me look at the table of contents so I get that right. No, I'm sorry, it's Lillian. Lillian, Ina is her mom. Uh, Lillian, 1930s. And this is all about how um, the residential schools impacted these indigenous families through the told through the eyes of different women in the families. And the first two parts have both been told from the point of view of the main character, Sissy in the first part and Lillian in the second part and their children um, at the time that they're relating their stories. And so all of the information is relayed through the eyes of a child. And so you're seeing these, the adults act in all these ways and realizing why they're acting that way, but you're seeing it as, you know, from the children's perspective. So powerful. It's really, really well written. The characterization is excellent. So characters are so well developed, really bringing forth the horrors of the residential schools and what that did to indigenous families. Um, yeah, really, really well told so far. Um, I've also made great progress on my two audiobooks. So, uh, uh, the Mystery, Heartstone by CJ Sansom. I've listened to like another 15 chapters of that audiobook while I've been doing my puzzle and that's been really fun. And I've also listened to two chapters of The Furies, which is the nonfiction about women and how um, women who experience violence, how they can try to fight back and what happens to them when they do try to fight back. Um, and the first, we just finished, uh, my buddies and I just finished part one of that nonfiction, which was about Brittany, a woman named Brittany from Alabama. And um, so it takes place in the US. And so it's about her experience with violence and how she tried to fight back and what happened to her. And so then part two will be about a woman from India, I believe. And then part three is about a woman from Syria. So getting different worldwide perspectives on that. It's very emotionally difficult reading, particularly on audiobook. I sometimes very much struggle with that. Um, other things that I am going to be working on, I had uh, I need to read some of the sleeping car the sleeping car porter by Suzette Mayer. This is a new buddy read that I am starting this week with uh, Priscilla over at Evening Reader. So it'll be our first buddy read together, and I'm excited to get started with this book. And then I just wanted to talk about some of my uh, the the three choices that I have made for the Irish Readathon, the Middle Grade March, and 
March of the Mammoths because um, I want to be able to check those off on my bingo board. So let's talk about them. So the Irish novel that I want to read this month is Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. This is a book that was recommended to me both by Doris and by Britta. Um, and this is about Bridie Devine, 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 who is a detective in Victorian times, Victorian London, and she is searching for a missing girl. So that's all I know about it. Um, but both Britta and Doris have told me that they think I will like this. So um, I'm hoping I will. And Jess Kidd is from Ireland originally. So that's my Irish readathon pick. And then for middle grade March, I am picking Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk. And this is about, this is historical fiction about um, a family in the Great Depression and uh, about a young girl named Ellie who really loves spending time in nature. But, you know, because of the depression, um, stuff's happening and her family is experiencing hard times and how that impacts Ellie and her family. So yeah, that one's been on my TBR for mm, over a year. So looking forward to that one. And then for March of the Mammoths, I have picked a book that is kind of technically a cheat, but I still think it totally counts. So I'm picking from my so-called ancient TBR, Working by Studs Terkel. This is an oral history. People talk about what they do all day and how they feel about what they do. So I picked this one even though the page count of the book is, um, let's see if we can find the page count. Oh, sorry, it's down at the bottom. That's why. It's like 600 pages, this paperback. But um, let's see, this is a hardcover book here. This is a normal hardcover book. Okay, you can see the size of the paperback. It's not a full size paperback and it's quite chunky and look at the text. That's how big the text is in this book. <laughs> so even though this book is 600 pages, I think with text that size and like there are no pictures in this book, this is just text the whole way through. So I think this qualifies as an 800 page book. <laughs> in the end, I think I will have read just as many words as um, somebody reading an 800 page book. And there is no, like there's not notes in the end of this book. This, the, the story goes right up until the last of the book. So that's why I'm cheating and picking a book that's not 800 pages long for my mammoth. So, and I do not expect that I will finish this this month. I just wanna get it started. So that's my, my book for March of the Mammoth, the ones that I'm picking for March of the Mammoths. So yeah, I wanted to talk about those in this video so that I could check them off on my bingo board because that's how I roll. Exciting news to report. I got a package in the mail and it's from a publisher. <laughs> I got publisher mail. So I figured let's open it together on the vlog. This is, uh, let's see, from Penguin Random House. And I think I know what it is because uh, a publicist reached out to me on, yeah, and asked me if I would like this book. And it is, yay, I'm so excited. This is American Women, The Transformation of the Modern First Lady from Hillary Clinton to Jill Biden by Katie Rogers, who is a New York Times White House correspondent. And I believe that this book actually has um, published. Let me see if I can find out for you. I think it came out last month. Um, it just says 2024, but I'm pretty sure the release date was just last month. Um, it doesn't say anything else on here. So this is uh, published by Crown and it's nonfiction. And you know, I love to read about the president. So I thought this one would be right up my alley. Um, I have read some books about other first ladies, but more historical <laughs> the, instead of modern day first ladies. So this would be the first book that I've read about modern first ladies. And uh, I'm very excited to read about these ladies. I think they're all... Um, very interesting women from this time period, from Hillary Clinton to Jill Biden. So yeah, book mail. Thank you very much to Penguin Random House for reaching out to me and particularly um, the Crown imprint. I don't know that I've read anything from Crown before. So this will be fun to check this out and see what this is all about. Okay, let's wrap up this mid-month book bash, shall we? It is Tuesday morning and I apologize for the um, 
the shadow here, but it's early morning and the lighting is not great. Um, so this is my bingo card, my mid-month big bet mid-month book bash bingo card and you can see that I was able to complete all of the prompts except bunting. I never did run across any bunting um, but I did reference every other um, one of those prompts in the video. Um, the Equinox one I'm counting uh, because we sprung ahead this past weekend so we we lost an hour um, when the time change happened and that is a sure sign that spring is coming. Um, this is the list of books that I read in over the month. I finished The Underworld. I am about, I am over 50% of the way done with Heartstone, my book for March Mystery Madness. I am 30% of the way through The Furies, which is my book for Women's History Month. Um, Teapot Dome Scandal is my um, book for my presidential reading challenge about Warren G. Harding. Um, and I am about 60 pages from completing that one. A Council of Dolls, uh, an indigenous book. I am halfway through that one. The Sleeping Car Porter, I started and I've read the first 60 pages. And Working, which was my mammoth for March, I read the prologue. So yeah, that's pretty good to read in three, six, seven books over the month. I mean over the month, over the weekend. So I'm very happy. I've got my lovely daffodils still. Um, I'm very happy with my progress over the weekend. I hope you all found some great books to read and I'll talk to you later.